Alrighty, we are back to the nitty gritty of the survivor profiles, two down and six to go, and I left it up to the YouTube comment section to decide who would be up next, and the answer was 110% clear. Everyone's favorite survivor outside of Zoe and Yalis, although it was a coin flip between the two, and that person was Roche- Nope. <laughs> It was a toss-up between Nick and Bill, but Nick was the winner of the toss-up, so we'll be exposing the dark history of this smart-mouthed, womanizing, germaphobic, and fried chicken-loving realist, con artist, criminal. Before we get to the meat of this video, let's trim some of the fat. Don't forget you can watch our previous Survivor profiles on Zoe and Ellis if you haven't already, and to check out our Best Up series to see the funniest moments in our Left 4 Dead streams, which you can be a part of every Friday or Saturday depending on my work schedule. While the fat's been chewed, let's get to the content. Survivor Profile everybody! Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Nick! Now I'm ripping this from the Left 4 Dead official website. Nick is officially 35, but his hometown is unknown. I'm gonna guess he's somewhere from the north considering he has such a disdain for southern people, and he brings up Atlantic City and other various northern cities. Now he has a lifetime of drifting from city to city, finding back alley card games, and trying to stay out of jail, and it's taught Nick two valuable lessons. Don't trust anyone, and look out for number one. He'd come down to Savannah looking for gullible fish on the riverboat gambling cruise circuit. Instead, he found a city about to be engulfed by infection. Now he finds himself forced together with three complete strangers in a fragile alliance that goes against every instinct he lives by. But he's gonna have to learn to trust them if he wants to survive. No other survivor in our profiles will come to this level of shadiness that Nicholas does. Having two jobs on his criminal resume, gambler and carn artist, he also seems to have some violent tendencies in his job descriptions. He thinks of himself as above many people and will be quick to judge any follies in others, hence why he is given the title of the complainer in his group of merry misfits of survivors. He is constantly finding fault in other people's plans, especially Coach and Ellis, and the increasingly sorry state of his teammates' character flaws, especially Ellis, as he judges them. When trying to survive the apocalypse, however, Nick will have to learn to cooperate and coexist with his three other new companions, although it's tough to tell if he's warming up to them or just tolerating them long enough until he can slip away. One of the most discernible things about Nick's appearance and even personality is his white suit, which he claims cost upwards of 10 grand. That suit of his undergoes so much piss and shit and blood, Nick, Nick proclaims his disgust for anything that touches it as soon as it happens. Nick, get your OCD uh, smelling ass moving! No, no, what? Oh! <laughs> oh, no. oh, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Coach, you do that again, and I will bury you alive. Don't mean to be picking on you, but y'all look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Vanity be thy name for this slicked back fellow, wearing tons of rings, one of which bears the symbol of a gang that, funnily enough, Francis has a tattoo of, which I will explain a little more once we eventually get to our favorite biker. With all this shipping and potential romance in Left 4 Dead groups, Nick is one of the survivors who doesn't get any loving, but he may have some kinky time right before the green flu kicked off. We can gather this, that he is a womanizer, and see lipstick smudged on his collar, as well as a hickey on his neck. And when he hears the sound of a witch crying, Nick will sometimes say, sounds like my ex-wife, implying he was once married. I think I hear my ex-wife. Come on, guys, I need some help. Did you miss me? No! God no! damn it! No! Son of a bitch! No! Besides what's on the exterior and hints of his past, let's actually dive headfirst and see what compromises Nick as a person that led him here. Now, some might say, oh, he gambles and schemes people out of their money. It just sounds like he's a mix of a crotchety old chain smoker in Vegas and Eddie from the cul-de-sac. Ed, Ed, and Eddie for you youngsters. Look up the show, best cartoon of my childhood. In the commentary for Left 4 Dead 2, the developers state that Nick's character was originally escaped prisoner that stole a nice suit. The writers originally devised a biography for a convict character. There was an idea that here in the lawless world of the infected, this escaped convict, sick of wearing prison clothes, had taken the effort to loot a very expensive white suit from an abandoned clothing store. He might as well survive the apocalypse in style. 
this concept gradually evolved into the riverboat gambler. When he's picking up a firearm, Nick will sometimes say it is illegal for him to carry and own a weapon, especially a full auto fully automatic one. And considering he is in the United States where the Second Amendment allows citizens to the right to bear arms, it would have to mean that Nick is a felon. Felons are stripped of their right to carry and own firearms, and don't get into political arguments over guns and shit. I don't care either way, no political bullshit in my comment section, damn it. I will have you deleted. Nick also carries with him the knowledge of disposing and cleaning brains out of suits and blood out of wedding dresses, hinting that he has come into situations that demanded this knowledge in a quick spot more than once. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped him? Oh, what the fuck's happening? Oh, oh man. Shit, man. Oh, man, I shot Alice in the face. Why the fuck did you do that? Well, I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Oh, man, I seen some crazy ass shit in my time, but just chill out, man. I told you it was an accident. You probably... He went over a bump or hey, something. Hey, the car ain't hit no motherfucking bump. Hey, look, man, I didn't I didn't mean to shoot the son of a bitch. The gun went off. I don't know why. Well, look at this fucking mess, man. We're on a city street in broad daylight here. Believe it, man. Well, believe it now, motherfucker. We gotta get this car off the road. You know, cops tend to notice shit like you're driving a Just car against this fucking a, blood. Just take it to a friendly place. That's While gambling isn't necessarily a crime, depending on where you are, betting scrupulous amounts of money, I could see Nick pulling some underhanded tactics to rake in the winnings, like having a hot chick standing behind an opposing player at the card table and giving them signs as to what card each player is holding, which could lead to arrest in casinos and being attacked in back alley dealings, hence his con artist persona. This all would explain where Nick acquires the funds for such a lavish and expensive suit, which I think details a little bit about his ideals of cleanliness. Nick also appears to be somewhat of a neat freak and a germaphobe, kinda like Howie Mandel. He often complains about his suit getting ruined and balks about having to travel through dirty and unsanitary places. Nick makes the statement that if people had been more clean oriented and used more hand sanitizer that maybe the green flu would have been prevented if anybody sees any hand sanitizer let me know oh come on man you ain't afraid of a little dirt are you a germ just wiped out the whole planet coach so yes you got a real thing about germs don't you nick catching a cold isn't high up on my list of concerns right now yeah ha 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 a little bit more hand sanitizer and we wouldn't be in this mess Although, as we know, the virus is airborne, not just spread through hand contact, so hand sanitizer wouldn't have done much of a difference. Germaphobes will tend to overuse hand sanitizer, feeling as it, if most forms of physical touch, will mandate lubing up their hands. When having to go through two different sewers, one in the passing and the other in the parish, Nick is super reluctant and bitches the whole way through. In fact, Nick was so hesitant that he even offered the other survivors $1,000 to piggyback ride him over the sewer water, for which the rest of his team mocks him. For. Despite the mocking between he and his teammates, he does have a relationship with each of, the, which, with each of them. I, I mean, I guess you could call it that. Let's get, let's go ahead and talk about his relationships. Hey, lab girl. Hey, C. Tons of fun. This building is on fire. Grab a weapon and let's get the hell out of here. I am not. I am not. Starting off with Coach, Nick and Coach seem to live to trade jabs with one another, much like Francis and Bill. Nick insults Coach and makes fun of his weight, but will also not hesitate to compliment him when he does kill something good like a special infected. He seems to respect Coach's status as the group leader, even though he's often the first to voice doubts about any of Coach's proposed courses of action. Nick recoils quickly when he has clearly annoyed Coach, and Coach is quick to shut down Nick if his complaints get too close to the line. Their antagonism stops at words, as neither one ever looks likely to abandon the other. When Nick mourns for Coach, he will sadly say, you were one hell of a man, Coach, or I'll miss ya. Another mourning line, God damn it, Coach, what did you leave me with? Shows that despite their attitude, Nick acknowledges Coach's leadership in the group. Rochelle is the one survivor Nick seems to like from the very start. She is the one character he will not threaten with violence if she accidentally shoots him, instead telling her to firmly stop. Sometimes when Nick mourns for Rochelle, he'll say, I can't think of two other people I would rather have seen to go first, or so much for repopulating the earth implying that his interest in her may be primarily reproductive and, of course, sexual. But it could also just be in a belief that she was the last woman on Earth, and any chances of repopulating relied solely on her. And most of all, Ellis, the bane of his apocalyptic existence. Nick has little respect for Ellis and constantly mocks everything about him, including his optimism and appearance, while often implying that Ellis is a stereotypical hillbilly compared to his own sophisticated street smarts and life experience. At an extreme in the passing, he outright threatens to leave Ellis behind. 
for the last time, I am not leaving it behind. Look, I don't have a problem leaving the car and you behind. However, his respect for Ellis does seem to grow as the story goes on. For example, in the beginning of Dark Carnival, Nick will either compliment Ellis or go back to his old habit of trying to get a rise out of him, talking shit about Jimmy Gibbs, but he will also talk about asking if the Midnight Riders are any good, but he does make fun of his accent quite a lot. And when it comes to the original survivors, Nick can be summarized into just a few choice statements on how he feels on all of them. Tits! What an ass clown. I'm telling you for the last goddamn time, lower the goddamn bridge! Greasy vest wearing monkey. Go to hell, suit. Quick trivia before we close out the video. In an in game vote, Nick came out joint top with Ellis as people's favorite character, both getting 33% of the vote for PC players, but he did come in second place on the 360 version with Ellis coming on top. That's about it for your favorite Dick criminal. I felt like it didn't cover nearly as much as my last two profiles, so let me know if I missed anything. I'm using clips from popular SFM videos to give you better visual representations, mostly from BG Bean and her Left 4 Dead SM series. So go check her out. I got a link in the description to visit her channel. You may have also noticed I finally got some new background music. That's thanks to my friend Ryan Torres of Greenhouse, who just released his new album Ghost Memories. The link to his band camp is in the description if you want to listen to his electronic style music. Why is everything historic always so goddamn filthy? And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know who should be net profiled next. And you can join us on our live streams every Friday and Saturday, depending on my work schedule, but this week I don't work Friday. So, we're going to be streaming tomorrow night. Well, that's it for the video, Tuts. Let's get out of here and uh, stay well.